Easy Top. My name is Omekule Ahmed Adeyemi. We shall be looking at National Examination Council Past Question on Agricultural Science. Our essence of looking at this question borders on its importance when it comes to students facing the reality of examination question in the examination hall. And as a result of this, it becomes imperative for us to look at practical ways we can deal with some of these questions in case students are faced with such question in the examination hall. And it is as a result of that that we shall be looking at the National Examination Council NECO Senior School Certificate Examination Past Question on Agricultural Science Alternative to Practical. 2011 Practical Questions. We also want to note here that in the examination hall, when you have been given the examination paper, what comes to you, what appears to you is something that looks like what we have on the screen, which has the National Examination Council and the nature of the exam. What we are going to find here is agricultural science one alternative to practical. Notably, it is 60 marks and you have to answer everything within an hour 30 minutes. But before you proceed, the real life situation, you are going to realize that you have to read the instructions. And uh, here we have something like, do not open this booklet until you are told to do so. And uh, while you are waiting, read the following instructions carefully. The first one is that write your name, examination number, center name, center number, and serial number in the places provided at the top right hand corner of this booklet. Secondly, you will be told to answer all the questions in the alternative to practical. And the third one is you have to write the answers in the spaces provided in the question paper. And I believe that if one follows the stipulations or the guidelines concerning the, exam the answering of the examination question, one will at the end of the day come out with flying colors. And I would also want to say that the essence of having practicals like this, the essence of solving questions like this is to warm somebody's out, is to prepare the students for eventuality so that when you are faced with this question you can answer them looking at templates like what we are about to solve in this uh, section. Now let us whiz it up. Now let us uh, look at uh, the question we have before us and we can see diagrams and uh, we have various things listed a, B, C, D, and E. And the question that uh, we have as question number one states, name diagrams A, B, C, D, and E. I will repeat, name diagrams A, B, C, and E. The total marks is five. That is five marks is allotted to the question if you answer it uh, appropriately. So if you want to answer such a question, you go to the spaces provided for filling the answers. And so let us uh, try to answer the question adequately. Yeah, the first one that we have as A there is what uh, we call the theodolite. 
the first one is theodolite. B, what we have there is hook and line. And uh, what we have as C is measure, measuring tape. Some people call it tape measure. But uh, I think the global name is, or the most common name is measuring tape. Then D, what we have there is the scoop net. And uh, we have for question number E, what is called ranging pole. Ranging pole. So if you look at the diagrams again, we will see that A is a theodolite, B is hook and line, and the question C is a measuring tape. Question D is a scoop net, while E is a ranging pole. So when you are faced with a situation like this, what you need to do is to look at the diagrams very well before you answer the question. And having been able to do that, you identify these diagrams and write it out. Let's move now to question number, question B. Let us read it, read it up to B. And uh, in B, we have uh, the question that goes like this. Describe diagrams C and D. Describe diagram C and D. If we are faced with a question like this, we are told to give us certain basic features of these items, certain basic features of what has been shown in the diagram. And we can see that in answering this, we look at the first one, which is C. And C is measuring tape. So the first thing we can say about it is that it is it is a tape or object that is used for taking measurement. Taking measurement of length, breadth, and height. So basically, it is a tape or an object that is used for taking measurement. Now, we can also add some other basic information. And some of this information is that sometimes it is made up, you know, made from rubber, plastic, linen, and uh, steel. And again, sometimes it is calibrated using metric unit or imperial unit. It is also used to measure around corners or angles that are very difficult to measure. So those are some other things that we need to know about the uh, tape rule or the uh, measuring tape. Now let's go to D. The D, if we are asked a question concerning D, and uh, looking at it, we identified it as the scoop net, as the scoop net. The scoop net. So basically, the scoop net is used to harvest fish. It is used to harvest fish. It is used to harvest fish. And uh, what we need to note here is that, you know, uh, we have uh, those who are into fisheries. They have ponds. Some that are even, uh, some that are, uh, farmer, uh, I mean, those who are into fisheries use this to bring out uh, fish from the pond, probably for treatment or probably to relocate 
to another place. So the scoop net is used to harvest fish. It has um, the way it is woven. It can be cylindrical and it can be rectangular. But the basic use of the scoop net is for harvesting of fish. It makes the catching of fish very simple and uh, easy. So in terms of precision, we can use the scoop net to get the, uh, the type of fish or the one we intend uh, to bring out of uh, the stock we have in our pond. Wizzy Top.